to their belt. Mm. And all of that stuff was actually sculpted directly on the model. So it's like a little closer to the body than you could like normally easily achieve by like gluing the stuff on yourself. So I think it looks a little better unless you really go at it and like re-sculpt or really trim down the pouches to fit them on. And so what I wanted to try and do was use that part of the, re the reaver and then just cut off the lower leg and replace it with that of one of the Primaris Intercessor models. So most of the most of the marine models, they have a bunch of different poses, but if you compare them between like the Intercessors and the Reavers and stuff, they're pretty similar. Um, so with that in mind, I essentially just went in and cut off the lower part of the leg and then cut off the upper part of the leg of one of the normal primaris they are like i still have to do a little green stuff work to um fill in some of the seams for at least this one leg here but and then i still haven't glued on the other leg yet but they work pretty well and then you maintain all kind of the nice gear and stuff on the legs um, but yeah. And then they also do have like the little straps and stuff that you can glue to their breastplates with like other grenades and stuff. I wasn't too much, too keen on the actual grenades, but they're easy enough to like trim them down and then just fashion the grenades into like little pouches mm. or something. And that's what I've done here. Is the stream still going on Twitch's end? Because it seems to have ended on YouTube's end. I think it's god damn. I th let me check. Uh it says hmm, I think it's still going on I think it's still going on Twitch. It does look like 3 minutes ago the stream disconnected. So that might have killed the YouTube one. Yeah, because uh, like there's a chance oh, it'll start on. up again. Let's but... just see live now. Okay, I think. Yeah, I'm back on it. Okay, so I imagine there was just some blip or something in the internet here, and that just killed it. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Let's see if I can. I think I can. Should be able to bring it up on my phone. Let's check it out and see if it's going on. Oh, it's definitely going on on YouTube. I managed to refind it. Okay, so you did refind it. So yeah, yeah but I imagine it just it stopped and then yeah, that's cool. Well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I guess, yeah, it's hard. It's hard for me to, like, monitor all of that at once. But it does look... <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. Um... Okay. Alright, so where was I? Oh. And then I guess the other, the other thing that I started that I started working on and been considering for a while. The new Dalok gang, they have a bunch of interesting like firearms and stuff, and one of which they have like a flechette pistol, which they call it a pistol, but mm. you could argue that. <laughs> um, but I thought with a little conversion work, you could make it look to look like a pretty convincing bolter for like a space marine or something. And so that's what I've been working on now. So the Marine will have a uh, kind of like an SMG style bolter and then the shotgun. But Adam, aren't you forgetting that the bolter fires mini rockets and it just looks too small, wink, wink. <laughs> it, yeah, I hear you. Um, but I say screw that bullshit. Mainly because like, well... I don't know, like, you think buy... it's the far future, and you probably have different sizes of bolt round, in all honesty. Like, yeah. it... 
I'm not really a firearms expert, but you'd think there'd be different kinds of bolt rounds going around the place. Well, yeah, I mean, even in, like, the diff different novels and stuff, they talk about different caliber rounds and stuff. And certainly the Death Watch, for instance, they have a whole series of different different rounds and stuff for their guns. I don't remember what any of them are called, but they're probably something stupid, like Hellfire is one of them. That's, eh, yep. that's fine, uh, I guess. Oh, um, okay. So where were we? Oh, and one other thing that I thought I'd bring up, which I've been experimenting around a little bit with, um, one of the things, which I used a little of these on some of the Imperial Guard conversions I've been working on, but um, something you can do to kind of spruce up your like miniatures guns and stuff is if you can replace like the barrels of their weapons with brass tubing. And that often can look really sharp if you do it well. Yeah! I need to find out where I can buy some brass tubing. Probably that train website that I used to buy my rivets from. I assume they would have it. So I bought mine off of eBay. And there's a company called Albion Alloys. And they make like little brass tubing sets. Um, and what they call them, they're these little, like a slide fit set. Where each one of them has four different millimeter size brass tubes and mm. for instance this one that i'm showing here it has a 0.4 a 0.6 a 0.8 and a one millimeter uh size brass tube and they actually slide together so you can actually oh use so they them. have yeah they, they have, have a hole, hole in it already yes yeah, so they're a little tube and you can actually slide all four of them together so you could actually cut a few of them of different sizes and then slide them together to kind of create more of like an interesting interesting looking shape or barrel. And so what's neat about these is some of the tubing is it's incredibly thin um, such that even for like some of the smallest work like you could easily like this smallest one like holy shit it's tiny um oh like, wow it's like really fucking tiny so like if you compare it to so here's one of the space marine bolt rifles one of the new bolt rifles like it's ridiculously tiny so for the most part you you don't really have to worry about not being able to find something small enough what you might have to worry about is if you're if you're really gung-ho about some of the large bores of like the GW <laughs> um, weapons, you might have to go with a set that's larger than what, say, I purchased here. Because the largest one here, which is um, one millimeter, is not even close. It's not even close to the bore of the new Primaris. I think they're called bolt rifles. I don't know. Just I always find seem to think the bolters look better with a slightly, even like a regular bolter. If you just replace it with a slightly thinner bar barrel, immediately looks better. I sort of think that's true too. The big thing with the um, with like a lot of the Space Marine bolters. There's just a lot of extra bulk that they're carrying around for seemingly no reason. Like, for the most part, the majority of the rifle should essentially be the barrel and then, like, the mechanism behind the barrel, which has, like, the trigger mechanism and all that shit. And so, any extra bulk, like, around the barrel, you probably wouldn't really want unless there's mm. something, like, incorporated into that like an underslung grenade launcher or whatever. So like these bolters, like they have a huge bore for the barrel, but then they have like just tons of extra shit up on top of it, which doesn't look to serve a purpose. I mean, I don't think all the mechanism and like the receiver of it, I don't think that's built. That's not, not above the barrel. So I don't really know what, 
maybe some kind of auto stabilizer there's some things like some bolters are like linked to the space marines like targeting system yes uh, i mean uh, you might be able to argue something like that but i would imagine they'd be able to make something a little smaller than that but regardless just playing the devil's avocado man yeah man um regardless and so those work well for like changing like the barrels and stuff um, I will say they're a little bit of the little brass tubes are a pain to work with where they can be. Um, you you sort of want to put like a pin inside the barrel um, or the brass tube before cutting it with an exacto mm. blade because if it's particularly for the thicker ones, that will you'll crush the tube. And so here, for ah. instance. I have one of the little tubes, and I have a little like a dress, a dress pin that I cut down, and so that you can slide directly in to the brass tube, and then to actually cut it, I t take an exacto blade, and then um, put it on some hard surface, which I'm probably not gonna, it's not gonna focus well, but. Then you put it on a hard surface and sort of just roll the brass t the brass tube along the blade and just slowly roll it and you'll essentially cut through it and around the whole piece. Mm. That's what I found to be the easiest way to do it. You can't if you try and use like a a hobby clippers or something, you're just gonna crush everything and then. It, that's particularly bad if you've if you've slid a bunch of these together of different sizes and then try and clip it you mm. will like crush them all together and then you, it's difficult to get them apart uh. um, so you have to be careful that's the moral of the story um, okay um, all right so where were we Oh, and one other thing that I, which maybe I'll try and actually do this on stream. So I need to, for all of the weapons for the Space Marine, I need to, oh, shit, I actually got, we got a comment, I think. Let's, oh. Twitch is working, and I think it is working. Now, how do I, if I want to respond to this, I guess I have to do it in Twitch, huh? Yep. Let's see if I can do it. Stream chat. Here it is. It does seem to be working. Let's see if I can post something in the chat. Not that I think we typically would do. Okay, it's working. Cool. What was the what was the comment? No, uh, the comment was it just was tricky. Twitch stream is working, I believe. Oh, okay. Where Twitch is working, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Um, okay. All right, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah. So, I'm working on both this, like, little Space Marine bolter and the, the shotgun. And <clears> so, for whatever reason, Games Workshop doesn't really like to add front or rear sights to any of their weapons, which they, which the operator would use to actually aim the weapon, and so <clears throat> because of that, we have to go in and add them ourselves. And so, for instance, if we look at the little bolter here, for whatever reason, Games Workshop often will add like something a little like fin to the front of the weapon, which I assume. I, I don't even know actually why they add it, but that you could make an argument that that little fin, which I'm pointing to here, is the front side of the weapon. But then that doesn't really do you any good if you don't have a rear sight, which you can line up with the front to actually aim it. So, most of the time for the weapons I convert, I just find some small little plastic piece, glue it up to the top, and then trim around it to kind of make a rear sight for the weapon that'll line up with the front. Um, for the shotgun, 
it doesn't matter quite as much because if you actually look at a modern shotgun, a lot of them, or it depends on the type of shotgun, but a lot of them mm -hmm. actually don't even have a rear sight. And the only thing they at the front at, at the front is like a tiny little like bead, and you kind of shoulder the weapon and kind of point that at whatever. And since the since the ammunition a shotgun uses is typically like birdshot or something, and it like spreads out when it's shot, like you don't really ha you hardly have to aim. Um, but some of the like more modern like combat shotguns and stuff that a lot of militaries use, um, they do actually have front and rear sights. And Makes it, sense because a lot of them use slugs and stuff like that. Yes, and so that they don't spread as much. Come on. And so for whatever reason, they sculpted the Gene Steeler Cultist shotguns pretty well, and they do have a front, or most of them anyway, come on. Can get it to focus. Can't do it. Come on. Well, yeah, so the Gene Steeler Cultist shotguns, they do typically have a forward, a front sight, but nothing in the back. And so that, I should try and add something to that. Um, in this case, like, maybe I was a little too premature and I already glued the shotgun onto the model so this might make it a little harder to piece something on the back there um, <laughs> to be a rear sight but we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes um, okay and so for doing this one of the things that I found works pretty well is if you have any of the Skitari, essentially any of the Adeptus Mechanicus Skitari kits, a lot of their rifles and stuff have a lot of like weird greebling and details and stuff that often you can trim right off and glue on top of the model and it works pretty well to, works pretty well as like a rear sight. So let me see if I can find one. And so I feel like I have a box of the, yeah, let me get a picture in there, of these, like... Yeah, I've chopped most of them up. <laughs> yeah, like Adeptus, Mechanicus, Guitari, these dudes here, which they're actually, they're nice models. Like, I feel like I've slowly started cutting up a lot of their rifles and stuff, just to cut off little tiny pieces and stuff to use to use for like rear sights or other pieces to their weapons. I I use one of their long rifles as a base for the hand cannon I built, like the old medieval style one for. Uh, um, yeah, so they they work really well. For for band. Like that. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut off one of these one of these little rifles here. I probably, if I searched around enough and all the pieces and stuff I have, I probably have another one that I cut up, but whatever. I'm never gonna assemble these models proper, so I think I converted, like, one model from the set, and, like, I did what I needed to do with them. That's fine. <laughs> I feel that's often what tends to happen with a lot of the models that I'm working on. I'll buy, like, a whole set of models to get, like, because I want to make a single conversion or something. But, all right, so here we have the little rifle that I cut off. Can we get it to focus? The constant struggle. Um, there we sort of did it. So what's interesting about these, like these actually sort of, these Skitari rifles and stuff are probably some of the better rifles that Games Workshop has made as of, or I guess these are several years old now. But they, they have front sights and they have a, they even have a little piece at the very back, which 
this would be great if we can get this to focus. They have a little piece at the very back, which sort of looks like a rear sight. Oh yeah, there we go. Right here, which I'm pointing to with the blade. It sort of looks like a rear, a rear sight. It doesn't oh, really yes. work because this like energy cowling or whatever the fuck obscures all that. So I, I don't really know what it's for. But, I mean, you can cut that off and place it on like another gun and then also like the little trigger guards and stuff underneath them oftentimes those little like flat pieces there i find if you like clip that off that can be placed and then you can cut a little notch a little notch in it and then makes like a little v sight at the back of a rifle so long as you don't drop it while doing it. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah, I feel that's that's the constant struggle. Um, so let's ch let's take a look here. Which do I? All right. So I think I'm going to use what we'll call the rear sight on this Skitari rifle. I'm going to trim that up a little bit, and then. We'll cut it off and do our best to glue it to the back of this little bolter that I'm working on converting. We'll see if we can do it. We'll see if we can do it without losing it. Um, one thing that I find that works really well for some of these smaller pieces, um, when gluing them on, if you add a little bit of this, which I've talked about this on stream before, this Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, you add just a tiny amount to where you're going to put it. It allows you to like position and reposition um, the piece for a while, which particularly for something like this, it often takes a while to position it properly and get everything like lined up and kind of straight. And I feel that's one of the probably one of the worst parts about converting the little firearms and stuff which I've taken to doing a lot is trying to, if like if you replace the barrel or anything like that you have to spend a lot of time trying to line everything up straight which I think you've probably done a bunch of that too Nick oh yes and the worst ones is Centering things is the worst. I hate it. The number of times I've centered something, green stuffed it, and then I look at it again from a different <laughs> angle, and I'm like, like well, that's oh, a... damn it. That's fucked. Yeah, no, I feel it's often the case you'll get something that, like, it looks pretty good from one angle, and then you're like, yeah, I got it. And then, yeah. Then you start turning it around a little, and you're like, well, I, I don't got I it. I actually did a good job there. <laughs> Um, all right. So now comes the really fiddly part. Cutting that little piece off. Right, let's get this muddy. So you're working on painting something now, Nick? Is that going okay? Yeah, so I'm... So I was going to give him the a little bit of a sorceress glow but cuz I've carved some runes into some green stuff but I don't want to detract too much from the model like I don't want to give it too cartoonish like oh he's a ma magic user I'd rather just do it a little bit more subtly um so I think I'm yeah. going to I'm doing his base right now and I think I'm going to just do that uh with a little bit of warpstone in the cracks of this twin tail comet just to sort of give it a little well a nice thematic look as well as uh, just a cool okay. i really like the hex ray flame yeah. so that should be really nice all right so here's where i trim i cut off that little piece and now i'm just trimming down the base of it where i cut it off to try and make it sort of flat before i try and glue it down so this I do have like a little pair of tweezers here that, I don't know, I think I just have to try and get nicer tweezers 
But like you, I would think these would work well, but I, I don't. I haven't found they work that well. Uh, why don't you try and order for some uh, needle nose tweezers? You can yeah. get them from microscopy, and they're quite cheap. So just no, order them from RS or something. Um, but like my fucking fat fingers, like. So there's the little piece. Can it? Can the screen focus on that? It did. So there's the little rear sight. Now I have to transfer this to the back of the rifle, or in this case, the bolter. So let's set it down. I'm gonna move a little. I'm gonna slide a little closer to the table, such that if <laughs> if I do drop it, hopefully my body shields it from falling on the ground. Because if it falls on the ground, it's gone. <laughs> Oh yes, done that before. Been there, bought the t-shirt. Yeah, we all have, I feel. This is, I feel, even worse because the place that I'm at now, it's all carpeted. And it's like a, uh, a tan color that you just can't see shit. Uh, and anything's down there, particularly something this small. All right, so I mentioned that this Tamiya Thin Cement works well for this. You do have to be a little careful because if you apply too much of it, it does do a great job of melting the fuck out of whatever you <laughs> you put it on. So something is and you melted as, it. Yeah, something as small as this little rear sight. If you're not careful, you can kind of screw it up. So, oftentimes, when I take the little brush out of the cement, I, like, take care to dab most of the glue on the rim of the bottle um, before, like, applying a tiny amount of it back to the rifle where I want to try and apply it. All right. Shit, well, there I dropped it. Didn't lose it though. It's still there. Good. <laughs> you know, this is the type of stuff I like. I, not that I've done a ton of streaming, but this is often the stuff I like to, to do not on stream because it's so fiddly and like. You never know quite how the stuff's gonna go. Drive around to. Okay, there I got it up on. That's that's a start. Okay. Now, once it's sort of in position, that's when you you can start. Moving it around and try and align it properly. Now, the thing that you have to be careful with here is, so this little piece, like I just largely attached it. Mm. I'm going to have to, okay, so there, it's sort of focused. I largely attached it. I'm going to have to do a little trimming. So if you've ever actually looked at like the rear sight of a weapon, Typically, at the back, there's some, like, little V or a notch, and that notch, you align that with the front little stand at the weapon. And so, ideally, we'll have to cut that little notch into this little plastic piece. And so, if you're not oh, careful, wow. you'll, glue, you'll glue the thing on, and you're happy with its placement, and then it's like, good, I got it. And then when you try and cut in the notch, that's when you realize you didn't actually glue the little piece on well enough, or the the glue itself 
the thing Cement hasn't actually set, and then you just shift it off and it you fucking ruin it. So probably what'll happen here is I will add a little more of this glue and then we'll just have to come back to it later. We'll need to give it a huge amount of time to make sure it's actually set. Mm. The rest will destroy it all when we cut the little V into it. Um, and then oftentimes what I like to do is once I cut the little V in there, I will go up to the front side and trim that down a little bit such that I can actually look down the length of the site to the front to see how well it aligns. And if I could actually use it as a site, then I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, wow. So I, I feel I spend a lot of time on these little minute details that probably don't matter that much, but <laughs> that's what I tend to do. So, Nick, the next time you're trying to make, like, a modern firearm for, like, one of your Black Shield Space Marines or something, give mm. this bullshit a try. Try cutting into little notches and shit. Uh. Yeah, it's rough. But. I don't know. I don't think I have that much dedication for my Black Shields. They're a bit mass production, so... I don't think I have that dedication to uh, <laughs> the, to the craft for you. I think I just spliced the the back end of the the bolt rifle with the nice drum ba ammo, uh, yeah. magazine with the front end of the Phobos, cut it down a bit, and I'm pretty happy yeah, of how that looks. Yeah. But for the like more specialized stuff and the leaders, I definitely do stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think we finally attached the little. And so if you actually, if you look look at this, one thing you do have to be careful with once you like attach one of those little side, a rear side and the front side, most of the time, mm. like more modern firearms, they don't like that side sticking up really, really high, because that's just like another thing that could catch on something when you're like moving it around. So, mm. um. Oftentimes, I try and trim them down a little bit so there is, they take up as little spot, as little space as possible. Um, but yeah, that can be hard. So if you look at like, this is probably gonna be hard to focus on, but on this like little pistol that I had sculpted and cast for like the guard mm. like if we look at that that has the little rear it's not gonna focus well enough i doubt but it has like a little rear sight and a front sight that i think in this case i made the original one i made it with plastic card and just cut out the little v at the back there um so those are all the fun little details you can experiment with it if you're if you're willing to spend a lot of time with it and potentially get frustrated and angry as shit <laughs> um, as you lose and or destroy what you were trying to work on. Um, and so actually here, um, this is another little bolter bolt gun variant that I've in this case I made this a while ago and I haven't finished it but I was under the mind of I would eventually make some molds to cast it mm. see if we can get it to focus this is a little larger than the bolter I'm working on but I here let me actually get one the idea behind this weapon was to take one of the, what I think they call them, uh, heavy bolt pistol from the Reavers, 
and take one of those and convert that into a bolter rather than a pistol. So let me cut one out to show it. Because if you compare, so here's one of the, here's one of the bolt rifles to the Primaris Marines, and here's one of like the heavy bolt pistols. So I always sort of thought the heavy, the heavy bolt pistol on the bottom here, I mean, it's huge for a pistol, but I thought it could work as a pretty good foundation for a bolter. And so that's, that's what I did here. And in this case, like, I actually trimmed it down a little bit so it wasn't, it's not quite as tall. Come on camera. Trimmed it down so it wasn't quite as tall and took one of the little tactical rails from one of the other Primaris weapons and added it on top. Oh, come on. Now oh, there it's sort of is focused. And then again for this I created like the front and then a rear sight which, yeah maybe I'll take a picture of this stuff. That'll probably be easier to can just show it on the side there. Mm. Okay. picture this might be easier to actually show the the front and the rear side if I can So there's like, if you look in the bottom corner of the screen, you can kind of see the heavy bolt pistol and then above that, the, the little other bolter that I've been working on. You'll notice there's like a little, there's a little bar at the back. That's actually where I'm going to attach a stock, but I haven't done it yet. Um, and then... In terms of the in terms of the front and rear sight, it's a little hard to see in this picture, but you can kind of see this is I probably could have done a little better with the trimming here, but you can kind of see like the little V or whatever I cut in the back mm. of the rear sight. Um, but yeah, so that's what I spend a lot of my time on. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I guess I should do a similar thing with the, the Space Marine shotgun here. Um, let's see if I can find some piece that I could use to make the rear side for that. Now, what did I do with the... What did I do? Okay, so here's the little Skatari rifle again. Hmm. So here I might actually use... What does this look like?
So here I might actually use the bottom part. So the little like trigger guard or whatever of this guitar weapon. I think I'll trim that up and cut that off to to use that to start and create the rear sight for the shotgun. Uh huh. So we'll trim that up. At least partially. Uh, well, I've cocked that up. Uh. What are you? What particular part are you painting now? Are you? It's the base, but I've got a, a little bit overdone on the glow, and I think it detracts from the model. So I'm gonna just try and leave the glow in the cracks and then just fill the the, the erased bits with the stonework again, which is actually not that much of a hassle. So just when you know when you're painting it, you're like, uh, and then you say, or oh, maybe I'll leave it a bit further, and then you're still like, eh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah painting is very much, it can very much be like a back and forth type of thing where... I feel oftentimes I have a notion of what I want something to look like in my head and then I choose a bunch of colors and start at it and then most of the time I don't get quite what I've been initially env envisioning but it's at least close and then like whatever that's fine <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like you I think there's a lot of times where I've envisioned doing something and it's like it's not quite as I expected but it's good enough I agree, that's what... Mm. Oh boy, alright, back to the fiddly part. So I cut this off. Now. Oh boy, I shouldn't have glued the shotgun on. That was dumb. That was dumb. Hmm. Well, I didn't lose the little piece yet, so that's half the battle. Trim off a little bit more of the mold bars. And so one of the things, if you are working with these really tiny pieces, I find this is often a good time to go and get a new X-Acto blade. Mm. Because if you're trying to cut off like the little tiny details and stuff and you're struggling to hold the tiny piece, um, if you have a new and really sharp blade, it's, it's easier, it's a lot easier to do that without it like slipping and tearing and sending the little piece flying. At least that's been my experience. So I know I'm no longer using showing the little the blue cutting board or whatever. Because I think that made focusing even harder for the camera because it would try and focus on that rather than the miniature or whatever that I'm trying to trying to showcase. So that's cool. Right. I actually think I'm gonna get rid of the glow. I'm not happy with the glow. Uh, I don't want to I think too much of it is definitely a bad thing yeah I've not used I've used which one did I use I think I've used both of them at least a little but not a ton um, the glow which one is that is that like the blue one or the greenish it's the hex race flame which is the green one uh, the I think that is the one I've used the most. Not that that's really a lot, though. 
It's a good technical paint, but I think if you overuse it, it's very garish. So, yeah. uh, doesn't always look the best, as I am yeah. just finding out. But hey ho, it's just the base. So, yeah. But the base can make or break a model. Yeah, oh, I wholeheartedly agree, as I've seen some great models ruined by a subpar or a very cluttered base, or a base that is more attention-grabbing than the model. Yeah. But I feel, in most cases, like, so long as you try at least a little, like, it'll... It adds a lot to the model. Like, oh, yeah. I look back at my very early Ink 28 stuff where I didn't use to base the models, and I, I was just like, oh, God, these look horrible. Yeah. Well, so this is this is, this is is a lot harder to place this little rear side on the shotgun. So, yeah, that's another thing. If you're trying to do this fiddly work, most of the time, try not to glue it onto the model before you're done. Hmm. <laughs> Because it all it can make your life a lot easier. Oh. All right, we're getting we're getting a little we're getting closer. Or at least I got the little piece in place. So now, now I just have to fiddle around with it until I'm happy with its placement. And then again, I guess for that, we'll have to probably leave it, leave it where it is and wait until it dries before really going to town with it and trimming it up lest we pull it off. Mm. Um, so I feel once I'm happy with its placement then I'll maybe I'll try and move on to doing some sculpting. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, man, I'm really happy how this guy's turned out. Yeah, let me bring... Can you send... Do uh, you have a new picture of the model? I can put it up on the stream yeah. so people can see it. Or I think I can find one of the earlier pictures you sent today. I've done I've done a bit more work on it, so let me just do it. Okay, if you pro. Want to a new picture, I can put it up on the screen, so any viewers can get a better sense of what you're actually talking about. There we go. I'll just send that through now. The advantages of Google Hangouts. Yeah, Google Hangouts is pretty nice. Spent way too long on the skin. <laughs> well, the model has a lot of skin, so... Oh, yes. It's easy to spend a lot of time on something like that. Oh, wow, he looks great. He looks really good. Look at that creepy face in his chest. It's pretty creepy. And they didn't, yeah, even high one of his eyes got screwed up. Yeah. Poor thing. <laughs> I like the uh the wounds and stuff. Like they look good. Yeah, it was I was really pleased how they cuz I wanted to give him a bit of an unhealthy vibe. So I thought yeah, a little he, bit of just he does not look healthy. <laughs> he does not look healthy. So mission accomplished, I would say.
Oh yeah. Uh, uh, hopefully get a good reaction on the Insta and the uh, the Facebook group because though it's not a model for my war band, uh, it's uh, spent a lot of time on it. I like his little uh, screwed up boot or whatnot, where you can see his like toes poking through. Yeah, I th I thought like I just wanted to give hints at like maybe his origin, like maybe yeah. is he like something that's been breeding down there, or is he actually someone who mutated to be like this? Yeah, one thing on his leg, it almost looks like he is part of his bone, like poking up through his leg. Is that true, or is that just those, which bit like, is the oh? Those, those are little like, like boils or something on his leg. They're kind of like pustules. Okay. I yeah. kind of went for a slightly red inflamed look. Yeah, because that looks bad. He looks. I guess if that was a bone poking through his leg, would be seriously screwed up, and he probably wouldn't be standing anymore. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Yeah. I don't think more time is probably one of the cleanest environments, so he'd probably have a nice infection. Yeah. Most certainly. Yeah, he looks great. Oh, thank you. Pretty happy with the conversion, and then I was, I'm was i even happy with how he's been painted up. As I said, I was going to add some magical energy to him, but then I decided against it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alright, so I think I'm going to go and get some water to start start the whole sculpting process so i will be back in a moment or two fantastic All right, I'm back. So I think it's actually snowing outside where I am. Oh, wow. Yeah. The first snow of the new year. We'll see if we'll see how much actually accumulates. I heard that it was supposed to be a few inches, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, just about like a week or so ago, like it was warm enough that you didn't even really need a jacket here. I mean, normally, like in January and stuff, it's often like hovering around freezing temperatures. And so I think it, right now it's, I'm not sure what the temperature is outside, but it's probably around that. But before, it was pretty warm. Okay, yeah, it's just a little below freezing here. So that might mean the snow will actually stay around for a little. We'll see. 
How's it like where you are? Is it like cold and such or no? Uh, it's, we're near the North Sea, so it's uh, nice and we've got this bitter wind that has finally come in because we had quite a warm winter before Christmas and now it's suddenly starting to get pretty cold. All right, so in terms of, like, sculpting and stuff for... Now, there are a few things that I can work on. The big thing that I think I'm going to try and do is sculpt the... the buttocks of this, uh... Mordheim model for Eric's Warband. So if you actually, if you look at him, like, he doesn't really have much of a... we can focus in there. He doesn't... I guess he's supposed to be some, like, alien thing. Like, he doesn't really have much of a butt. And if I, I want this to be at least a little more human-like. Like, he, he used to also have kind of a tail, and I cut most of that off. Which, I guess, in the model you're, like, you're painting now, you used one of these, like, Urgul models too, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, I that's the you, basis of... Yeah, you, you, uh... I guess you sculpted like the loincloth and stuff like that, so you could kind of just yeah, kind of gave him a little that. pouch. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to, didn't have to worry as much. Um, so I guess one thing that I can, I think I've talked about this on some of the podcasts and stuff before, but um, we have this. There's this nice book called Anatomy for Sculptors: Understanding the Human Figure. And so I've been looking through this a bunch, and it has a lot of nice, like, pictorial stuff of, like, the different muscles and stuff, the human body and everything, and kind of gives you hints of, like, how not to do things. And so I've been looking at that a little to get a better sense of what I should do for this model here. Um, I feel for the most part, though, I'm just going to be putting some green stuff back there and pushing it around and we'll see what it looks like and it'll look close enough i think <laughs> yeah i got a similar book for it's like the anatomy for the artist it's not it's for both sculpting and drawing but it's yeah, yeah, it's that, very good as well that's good i feel for a lot of this stuff depending on what you're trying to do actually um Having good references and stuff can be pretty helpful. Oh, yes. Because I feel as much... I was going to say, as much as I'd like to think, like, yeah, I know what stuff looks like. As soon as you're, like, really there trying to think about it and try and draw something or whatever, sculpt something, oftentimes you can learn pretty quickly that you don't really know, like anything <laughs> yeah they really quite know what you should be doing hmm. we'll see if i can actually sculpt both cheeks of the butt at one time without screwing it up or if i'll try and go and just sculpt one of them This is the first time I've attempted to try and sculpt someone's but Well, no, that's not entirely true. For the one true scale space marine I was working on, um, a, one of our, um, mm. he actually owns a story called like statuesque miniatures and he makes a bunch of, he sculpts a bunch of nice models and stuff. In particular, he has a whole range of like nice female head and he was right. <laughs> and so I went back and re-sculpted um, the butt of the Space Marine and then like re-put all the armor plates and stuff over top of that. I think it resulted in a much nicer model at the end. Like it made a lot more sense. Um, but even still, that had a lot of A lot of armor plates and stuff like that to cover a lot of it so like hmm. yeah, I feel like this is 
mostly just kind of be putting a bunch of green stuff there, pushing it around a little bit, and When you're sculpting, um, is there you you typically use like the little color shapers and stuff too, right, Nick? Mm hmm Is there a one in yep. particular you like the best or use the most? The the one I use the most is just the flat one where it's just like a it's like a spade basically. Oh, uh, that yeah. is my favorite color shaper. Um, and then the second most one is like the rounded tip one. Okay. Yeah. I find most of the time, I'm nearly always just using the little, what's it called, like, the angle chisel, so it sort of looks yeah. like an X-Acto blade. Like, that's what I use almost all the time for oh, fair, fair. everything. But all of them kind of have their own uses and strengths, and depending on what you're trying to sculpt... Yeah, I just think I'm a bit more, uh, I'm a bit nuttier than you because I try and sculpt everything in one sitting. I very rarely do multiple sittings. Okay. Like that yeah, guy yeah, was sculpted yeah. all in one sitting. That's pretty crazy, man. I don't, I don't think I could do. Well, I probably could. It's just I'd be so, I'd get so pissed off at myself for screwing it all up or screwing up part of it. Well, I, I normally what helps a lot, and you probably do this as well as I have the model mounted on a cork, uh, and uh, just holding the cork yeah, prevents yeah. me from screwing up a lot. So that's true. Um, it really depends. Like I feel most of the time, I only mount the model to the cork closer to the end, like once it's done or like I'm ready to paint it. So like most of the time, I'm actually holding the model itself, which in that regard, that might be kind of stupid. <laughs> the number of times I've dropped a model doing that is, while I'm sculpting has it's been way too high. Hence why I went into my local uh, general department store and bought 30 wine corks and just... Uh... Yeah, yeah, and that largely took care of it. Yeah. So I have a bunch of corks that I yeah, largely just use for painting and stuff. And so I should... I should probably take to doing that. Gee, come to think of it, like you have like the more rounded ones here might actually be good because I'm trying to do like softer, like organic shapes and stuff and rather rather than kind of like the hard edges and stuff of like cloth. So that would actually probably be better for what I'm working at here. So maybe I'll... Switch it up. But yeah, so like I feel to anyone who's like watching it or watches this later, it's often good to just yeah, get a whole series of different of different types of the color shapers and then just experiment around with them and kind of find which you and you like better because and it also yeah, again depends on what you're actually sculpting and you also like getting a bunch of different sizes and stuff as well because It's hard to know what, what exactly you'll end up doing and hmm. so now's the type of thing. How does the how did the muscles in your butt change when you like like bend over or something kinda like or crouch sort of like this model is doing? Like I have no idea. Hmm. How much do they actually change? See if I can find a reference in this book. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I mean, they they have at least some. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it. Okay. Hmm. 
yeah, a few in general, just kind of getting a sense where the different muscles and stuff in the body are placed is kind of the main thing that you need to kind of know. I feel being a biologist for so long, you'd think I'd, I, mean, I guess you, you, you are too, really, you'd have a better sense of this, but I guess my, <laughs> my scientific background isn't really in anatomy and stuff like that, so... In all honesty, if you ever have the opportunity to take like a figure drawing class, I would like really recommend it because yeah. it, it really kind of makes you understand the anatomy that much more. Yeah. No, I feel like that's probably a good idea. I remember when I was in college, um, towards the end of my time there, I decided, you know what, like, I finished a lot of my classes, like, maybe now is the time to try and, like, actually take, like, some art courses. I don't even remember what the course was, but I tried to sign up for the one, and then they said I couldn't join because they didn't have enough space, so then I just stopped trying. Uh. <laughs> so I sort of tried, and then... They saw it went wrong. I uh, couldn't actually do it. Oh, shit, there are. Okay, so there are a bunch of things. Of hmm. oh, people crouching down. Yeah, and kind of showing you where, like, some of the different bones are and where, like, the... That's actually... Huh. So you're saying that this guy squats? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sense of what I should be doing so what is your plan for this guy like uh, is he uh, gonna you said maybe casting him in clear resin and, yeah so that's uh, the hope that's that's the main thing that I want to do with the model I want to uh, make a two part rubber mold mm -hmm. and then I will cast him in a clear plastic or a resin of sorts um, to kind of play at the notion that he's kind of like invisible or like losing his form and then Ooh. Um, and then I'll probably like the little painting and stuff that I'll do on the model will just be like on his like hands and maybe a little on his mouth where he has like blood and stuff from his victims that's kind nasty of thought. so like he's a little hard like you're not really going to easily see him until like it's too late it's, it's too late or someone's already been very part part named um but we'll see so like when I was working on some of the other models and casting stuff like a year or so ago, I got a two-part resin that was clear and it was made that way such that you could add different dyes and stuff to get different colors. And I mm. cast a few things out of it and it was a pretty nice like clear plastic to it and I thought after doing that that sometime I could find a project where I'd actually want to use that. And I feel I could actually experiment with adding some other light colors and stuff to kind of have like an inter probably like an interesting um like color effect throughout the model. Um, but that's something that I just I'll just have to experiment with. Um, but I think at the very oh, be least, really cool. Yeah, I think at the very least I can. do the clear the clear resin part and and we'll see like we'll see how it turns out and I guess worst case scenario if like I'm not that happy with how 
it turns out looking the clear plastic and everything i can always just paint it we can always just paint the model normal yeah so that should be cool so you, do you think those guys are going to kind of represent because eric's doing a vampire counts well it's a vampire counts like i'm doing a dwarf war band but uh it's like so do you think there'll be like the ghouls or the the, the zombies because i'm trying to remember all the dregs or whatever yeah, the so flip I mean, vampires I, have we've looked at it a little and so the vampire counts they can get like i don't they can't get skeletons but they can get like zombies they can get like what do you hounds get? they can get these hound type things and they can get these like I think you were right. They're called like dregs or whatever, and they they're the only ones like, you can give equipment. Yeah, so those are like I think sort of like hu they're supposed to be humans that I think were in Mordheim when like the comets and stuff, where the comet hit and fucked everything up, and so I think they're just really sorry, misshapen like humans and whatnot. Um, and yeah. so I thought maybe that could be these. But I feel just about any of <laughs> this probably, in terms of like game terms, they probably wouldn't want to be those humans because since they're going to be invisible and stuff, they're not really going to be able to interact too well with... So I think for the vampire accounts, those things were the only ones that could get equipment and like they were the ones who would like, after the battles and stuff, would interact with other like townsfolk and other people in Mordheim like well uh, I don't think there's very many townsfolk left in Mordheim now <laughs> or, yeah. or like outside of like when they bring the warp or mm. warp stone out to try and buy more equipment they kind of needed someone to that could do something like that I don't think most people would want to willingly interact with vampires or like zombies or something but deranged humans eh, why not or well, that was my thought yeah because i'm i'm kind of building this guy in the the uh this guy for eric in the hope that it's uh he uses him as a kind of an i see as a kind of like a necromancer style like so that creature. Would actually work pretty well i think yeah so i feel this this thing will be it'll count as one of those models in the war band and whichever it is I feel it doesn't rightly matter. Oh, yeah. I think most people, well, judging by Miggs' wall band, I can't really tell what most of the models represent, but uh, uh, like, I think you can play it pretty fast and loose in the yeah. Mordheim 2019. I agree. And then, because for the most part, it's not like Wartron, most of these models were kind of to build for like their character and kind of like interesting ideas, and particularly for Eric's war band there to kind of just be weird like anomalies and like thing weird happenings that have happened to things that have been in Mordheim too long so mm. like this like these dudes for instance they're sort of like losing their physical selves and sort of starting to fade into nothing um and I guess that's kind of probably true with like a lot of the stuff they're kind of coming apart and like these <clears throat> and the initial models he made were made from like those different wraith models so I'm not actually even sure what he's going to count those as in game terms I, I thought they're probably they, zombies they, that would I feel would work just fine yeah Come on, base, dry. I want to wash. Put a wash on you. So I think the bug's coming along pretty well, mate. <laughs> That's a mighty fine butt there, yeah. Adam. <laughs> um. Let's 
It's a little fuller and prouder than the original, but not that he's trying to, not that he's concerned, not that this model's concerned with that anymore, but no matter. When you use green stuff, Nick, do you, um, do you use, like, water or anything to, like, wet your tools and stuff? Uh, yeah, so I typically have, like, a little puddle of water on my cutting mat that I leave the main body of green stuff in. And I chop yeah, up yeah. off, dip a little bit of my tool in it, because if it gets too wet, it causes all weird, like, bonding difficulties, and then the green yeah. stuff can look really bad, and, uh, and then I kind of just go back to as and when I need it. That's sort of what I do. Like I have like a little, the little thing I use to fill with water for painting. Mm. That is what I use. And I fill ah. with water and the green stuff sits in there. Okay, so I think. It's coming along okay. It's it, it's interesting because like a lot of people haven't really started on their war bands. There's like a load of people. The people who I know are you, um, me. Well, I'm doing kind of a separate project. Uh, Ad, uh, Alex, Greg, Migs. Uh, there's that guy who's done a Skaven warband, and then, yeah. and then Tears of Envy, and that's really about it. Like, are you part of? I think there's like a Facebook group. Are you part of that Facebook group? Yeah, I got admitted to the Facebook group. Okay, I, I don't, I don't, I still don't have a Facebook account, so I don't really know what's there. But I was sort of under the impression that people have been posting stuff there of what they've been working on, but maybe that's not actually true. There people do, but it's it's not many people, considering there's quite a few people in the group. Like oh, okay, yeah. Gardens Anna from Gardens of Hecate is just churning out stuff, but that's because she has made some dark pact with some entity and is amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she uh, is incredible. Like her style, like she has such a distinctive painting style, like it's phenomenal. And yeah, I think it's like, yeah, I think even though I'm not really involved in the event, I po I'm a post most of my warband on there. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's not like, you'd sort of expect for, since the event's coming up this summer, um, I guess, I guess a lot of people there, maybe they, they still feel like they have a lot of time and they can... Mm -hmm probably see a frenzy of activity like months before like a month or two beforehand yeah as people like realize that time is short and they still actually have to make something i feel the one big thing we're yep. going to see we've already seen a lot of it but we're probably going to see a lot or a lot of conversions with like the Caldor models to the Necromunda Caldor models, like oh they, yeah, they weren't re they were released reasonably recently, and they kind of just they check a lot of the boxes for <laughs> kind of fantasy s fucked up looking humans. Oh yes, I think quite a few people are using them as a base. I mean, hell, I use them as a base for one of, for at least one of the Sisters of Sigmar that I'm working on, so... Yeah, but you heavily converted that. Yeah, I largely sculpted over everything, so you can't really tell, but even still. 
And then yours, like, I don't think anyone's going to use the same foundation that you did, which I feel is good for your dwarves. Oh, the yes. Solar auxiliary well, the... models are great. Oh, I, I love them. And they've got such a, the backpack is such a steampunk look. So yes. it just works perfectly. Satisfied with all of this, but I think I'm gonna stop fucking with it. And yeah, there's. A, I think that's the problem with green stuff. There's always that temptation just to be like, oh, just a bit more, just a bit more, and then you're like, oh, this is a lot worse. Yeah. And then I can kind of come back and let me take a picture of it, and it'll it's all be a little easier to see. Like, I haven't been. Paying that much attention to the actual stream to see how bad all that looked. I feel I need to find a better... A better camera. A better camera too do all the streaming and stuff because I feel it's too the folk that this camera I think is largely just to be like a web camera so I think it's it's good at focusing on faces and stuff like that and so we'll have to look around like it I do have like a nicer I recently got a nicer camera that we might be able to use that but it's like I think to actually use that, I'll have to get, like, a capture card for the, to allow mm. us to be captured and actually shown, like, on, like, the computer and everything like that. So I haven't, I haven't dealt with that yet. Um, all right, there we go. There's a picture. That's what his butt looks like so far. Oh, um, I think the stream is a couple of seconds behind, and it I'm waiting be, for yeah, the... That's true. Oof. Muscular butt. Yeah. He's taking advantage of all those scores. <laughs> uh, the one up. The other side of his butt, I think I need to do a little more work with that and add a little more volume to it. But or maybe. So once you're done painting the, uh, the Mordheim model you're working on there, what do you think? What's the next project? Uh, probably start painting the rest of my Mordheim warband, That's just to get ahead of the yeah. curve, basically. Um, uh, so probably because I've got the leader done with his nice war pick, but I think I'm probably going to do. Actually, the thing is, they're all kind of like mini character models, so. Yeah. Pretty fun to paint, so uh, probably going to do the beast eater next, and then uh, okay, and then yeah. see what takes my fancy. That's good. Not sure how long I'm going to do it. Like once I actually finish one of the sisters, the Sigma, like I don't know, maybe I'll just try and paint it, or maybe I'll. I feel like the sculpting and all that stuff is what's taking me the most time, so maybe. Maybe I'll just try and finish sculpting and assembling all of them. And then once that's done, I'll just try and paint them all. 
Yeah. It might also result in more of a uniform paint scheme, too. Yeah, mine's kind of more like a collection. Well, a, a collection of mercenaries and things like that, so it can go a little bit. As much yeah, there's gonna have to. They're gonna have uniting themes, but I think there's little bits of like I've got little bits of backstory, which I think we can talk about like on the more time stream tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Like the little bits of like ideas and backstories, because actually I want to hear. Because we've talked a lot about the warbands, but we haven't actually talked about the ideas behind them and kind of why you're going down certain paths. And I think it'd be just good yeah, to... Yeah, the more we like discuss some of that stuff, the more we establish, even if we don't necessarily write all of it down, if you have a, a clear sense of what you... what, like, the themes and ideas behind your models, you can... That a lot can often result in like a better, a better model in the end. And it just means you're more likely to include like little details, like paint like a little icon or paint a little tattoo that you know the meaning of. Not necessarily everyone is going to know the meaning of, but it just gives. Because uh, I don't know, that's one of the main appeals about this hobby to me. It's like I always, even with like the most basic guy, try and imbue a bit of a story with each of them because it just. I don't know, it comes across nice in the model, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's nice. And I feel since, often with a lot of this, since you're not necessarily making an entire army worth of models, like, you're, you have more time to do a lot of that stuff, too. And, and in doing it, I feel yeah, it adds a lot of character and life to the models and stuff itself. They're, like, more fun to look at. They're more fun to, like, paint and all that stuff. Like, I kind of... It does. I think it adds Cause, a lot. Because for me, like, I already have an entire background of why the Anthropophagus exists, what it's a little bit like, what its society is like, what's it doing in more time, etc., yeah. etc. No one's going to ask me about it, but I have an idea. Yeah, no, that's good. I feel that's something, like, we have to think more, I have to think more about what the Sisters of Sigma are doing. Like, I think, at least in terms of the official background, like, the Sisters of Sigma had, like, some fortress monastery or something in Mordheim when the meteor or whatever struck, or the comet struck the city. And I think that was largely mm. the only thing that stayed intact and wasn't completely destroyed and fucked up. And so the people in that monastery were largely safe from a lot of the catastrophe. And then they took it upon themselves to try and rid the city of the infectious and awful Wardstone. Yeah, because they kind of sequester it, yeah. don't they? So yeah, they're taking it to try and, like, save the populace and anyone else who's in there. So they, I guess, at least initially, probably had more noble ideals. And whether or not that's still true, I guess that's something we could and should explore. Um, and then again, like I imagine, each model in the warband wouldn't necessarily have to think the same things and have the same ideals so yeah because like what is going to be because like what would 20 years trapped in a fortress fighting against watching a city get worse and worse and no kind of aid from the outside except yeah. greedy war bands and stuff like it's going to put a pretty cynical bent bent on the rest of humanity for you so i can envision them i don't know for me like i'd immediately just think like these people just immediately just lash out they're kind of like they see themselves as the wardens of this place and any intruders they just lash out and kill because they're like this is our like no one's helped us this is our burden go yeah. away no yeah i hear that that that's a good idea and um or they're, uh, they're probably pretty quick to, like, denounce other people and... Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I, can, again, I can imagine. 
if they do have these vast stores of wardstone within the monastery, I mean, that's probably just really screwed up some of the people. Or maybe they've realized that it's how infectious and awful it is, and maybe they actually have means of trying to, like, get rid of it. They probably do, actually, but... From what I was reading, they seem to have, like, a vault. Like, it's like a sealed yeah. vault down. It's, like, warded where they store it all. Um, but... I, 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 I don't know. It's interesting, and I need to think of something that... Because like, I, I want to do a model for your warband, war whether it's just a mercenary that's joined the warband or something else. Uh, yeah. I need to think of something interesting. I'm like, really... Because Eric's is all right, because it was a bit more of a carte blanche of just do something a bit gribbly. And I was like, right. Yeah, I hear that. Anthropophagus. But yours is a bit more difficult. Ogren. <laughs> well, so An ogre. Yeah, do that. Go there. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Like, one of the things that I would like to try and do is, like, so this war band, like, I'm trying to make, I would like a bunch of them to look like they're younger individuals that have sort of, like, grown up there and they're probably going to, like, be heavily scarred and kind of fucked up because since they're, probably since they started they were pretty young and they've been constantly battling and fighting so they'll all be kind of like wounded and beleaguered mm. but then i imagine there will probably be a few that were probably there from the onset and like maybe they've aged prematurely or something from all the exposure to the warp stone and stuff so i'd like to try and make at least one or two older looking individuals and so that I think is going to require some thought of like how how I can actually do that effectively. Ooh. And like I feel I mean it probably just means I have to do even more sculpting or something. So I I don't know. So that's something like I would like to talk more about. Yeah, cuz like yeah, it's interesting because I know uh, on the Facebook group, Nicholas Grillet, who's like yeah. this cool artist and does a lot of Ink 28 stuff, has been posting some concept art of like ideas he had for the sisters. And like one of them was really cool is this kind of like almost Dark Souls-ish giant sort of like mutated, but not really like almost like a benign mutation, like a giant, like a sister with gigantism, like covered in candles and like a votive shrine and like a big axe which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I feel like you could go, like, tons of different ways with them. Um, I know, like, one of the things, the big thing I wanted to do was, for the first and foremost, like, the original Sisters of Sigmar models, a lot of them for the game were pretty bad. Like, they just looked like nuns with stupid oversized novelty hammers. Um... And boop plate. <laughs> yeah, and stupid shit like that. So the main thing that I wanted to do was try is to try and make more believable female looking warriors and fighters. Um, that mm. aren't like overly sexualized and stuff. And so like that that was the main reason I wanted to make the war band in general. Because like I don't things have certainly gotten better better in that sense in like the hobby and miniature wargaming in general but i feel there's still a mm. lot that can be done and improved and so that was sort of one of the main things that i wanted to try and get out of it to try and do a better job with some of that stuff um well they're already looking pretty darn good from the stuff i've seen and like you've got uh, the nice thing as i said earlier in our hangouts chat is that using different sources of models you're going to get a nice natural variation of heights where people who use the same sort of unit will probably have all very uniform heights and actually that's not going to be necessarily in a basically um, pardon my french a medieval shithole like people are going to have different nutrition values and like different heights and all that jazz yeah i mean so that's very true um and yeah, so that was yeah that was one that was that was one of the things I was like consciously thinking about. 
is to try and get some like different body types and stuff in there, at least in terms of like height and size. Um, like I would like to think probably the majority of them, if they are the warriors, they're going to be constantly like in combat and out adventuring and looking for more ward stones. So they'll probably be pretty in shape and fit. So not mm. necessarily like these like gross obese like whatever people, which you could you could imagine some like that might exist if like the like leaders and stuff who are just like essentially in like the monasteries and stuff and don't really go out like something that you could i guess imagine something like that but i feel like i was more trying to go with like the these adventures like maybe they're out in the city for like extended periods of time um and not necessarily like in the monasteries, whatever, and like because yeah, you could take more of like a ritualistic aspect of it with like candles and other stuff like that. But I thought it would be neater to have more like what they'd be like if they were actually out in the streets. Oh yeah, the and it gives kind of more scope because I know I think there's a few other people who want to do Sisters of Sigma. And uh, it's a nice scope because you can see, imagine after 20 years, there might or even be like the monastery might be split. Like mm -hmm. it might be like, schisms and uh, different factions and like might not be outright hostile, but they might have different sort of things that have emerged over the past 20 years. Yeah, so I imagine that's true. Like I feel there's like largely room for just about whatever you could come up with, I think. Because mm. one of my initial ideas of doing a model for you uh, is was basically just maybe make a heavier duty version of one of my armored like uh, environmental steampunk environmental suit guys, basically being like sent by the the my party just to say, hey, there's something really bad going over on the next town over. Okay. We, yeah, yeah. we we might need your help with it basically so like someone like very heavy like sculpt like a proper pack lots of stuff lots of gear heavier stuff kind of like because he's going into like the epicenter of where it's all really nasty yeah yeah so yeah something like that i think could be cool um yeah i feel like like I, I know one of the things that I wanted to do was to sculpt or like have a little owl warrior because in one of the classic Mordheim pictures there is like a little owl with a sword and a shield. But I think uh, Nicholas Grillet or what, whatever his name is, who you were just talking yeah. about, he already made such a model that I saw a little while ago when he painted it. So like I don't. Well, maybe I'll make one too, but I feel it was sort of already done, so it's not making models of a lot of the things there, which is, a, I feel, a pretty good idea. Um, mm. Because, I mean, there's a lot there, and most of it was never really explored with models and stuff. Um, Some of it, I have no idea what's going on, so... <laughs> I mean, I feel a lot, that was one of the things a lot of people really liked about the artwork and stuff in Mordheim, because it was, there was just a lot of really weird shit, and I, almost none of that weird shit was really captured in the models at the time. I would they say. were all pretty, like, most of the war bands were pretty bog standard. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I guess a couple, like, the Brian Nelson sculpts, like the freelance knights and stuff, looked a little different. They had like fish and stuff on their shields and shit. But not a carnival whole of chaos more than that, really. All right, so I'm back at the Space Marine again, doing a little more work mm. here and there, filling in some of the gaps and stuff. You have to be careful. I'm doing a lot of glazing. That going okay? Yep. Just waiting for it to dry now. Just giving some tone to the base. 
basically like old stone rather than freshly hewn. Yeah. How long do you typically, like when you're sculpting stuff, like how long do you typically wait until you think like oh, this is dry enough to like, like really like work on stuff again? I don't know, like, normally I don't double sculpt in the day, like, I'll sculpt and then I'll wait 24 hours, kind of like, I'll do it the next day if I want to continue sculpting. Uh, though normally green stuff does get pretty hard around 3-4 hours after you've mixed it, so... But though I, I have gotten a little bit cocky sometimes and accidentally nudged it with my skin and then green stuff is, has an amazing ability to pick up the smallest skin imprint, even if you touch it very lightly. So that's often what I tend to do. But then again, I feel most of the time, like I'm or at work during most of the day. So like you get home and like, you don't really have so much time to work. So like I'll have one mm. session of say sculpting or whatever. And then that's probably enough for the day. Oh, definitely. That's what I typically do. Like, uh, except on the weekends, like today, I got back from town after going into town saying I'm only going to buy some paints and walking away with some blooming banshees and the lake gang. So, sounds about right. What like can you it. do? All right, I'm now trying to sculpt some little straps on these pouches. Let's see how it goes. I guess that's another question I have for you. When you're sculpting stuff on your different models and stuff, do you, do you ever, like, sculpt something, say, off the model and then, like, glue it Ooh. to the model? If it's something very intricate, then I will. But normally, if uh, it, it's probably more stuff if I it going on a flat surface that I'd do it. But that's very rarely, and normally I try and sculpt it on the model because it like fits. Generally, ends up looking better fitting to the curve of something, or like fitting to the shape. Yeah, so I feel that's I almost always sculpt something like directly on the model because I feel the yeah the big thing is like I feel most of the stuff that I'm sculpting is really small and fiddly again. And so, getting it on where, getting the little tiny piece on the model, after the fact, can be a huge struggle. And is often something that I don't. Because other than you have to wait to let it dry, and then, and then stick it on, or if you try and shift it while it's a bit still in its like more uh, malleable form, it, it, it fucks up. Yeah. I don't know if I can ever make a model again where I don't use green stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I completely agree. I, I entirely hold you guys responsible for this. Like I used to be just, I used to just do little like happy little kit bashes, and then I sent you that fateful email, and then yeah. <laughs> suddenly it's like, nope, I have to green stuff it, I have to convert every model. It's not good enough. I don't know. I think it's more fun. I have more fun that way, and that's what I've taken to realize too. Because even like a very simple conversion, like a head swap, can just go such a long way to making your army or your warband or Necromunda gang or whatever the hell you're doing just that much more interesting. I agree, yeah. Though I suppose if you're a win-at-any-cost tournament player, you don't really care. <laughs> or even if you're not necessarily win at every cost, like most of the time you do like to be competitive like you actually you have probably have to modify your army 
semi-frequently. Or even mm. if not, if you're playing a lot of games, maybe it's just you don't want to always be playing the same thing. So, like, I could imagine that could get pretty rough. Like, I feel you could always be like, well, I have to make a new army, or I have to... I have to add, like, a new unit. Like, a lot of the armies and stuff, depending on what you're playing, it's not like they release all the stuff at the same time. Like, if you play... Oh, uh, yeah. All this ...or whatnot, like... Prepare for them to drip those over the course of three months. Yeah, like, they're gonna be getting a lot of new stuff pretty soon. Plus, Stay like, there, a new line, which is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Alright, so I think I've added a little I remember straps the... to the pouches here. Ooh. I think I got it in focus. I'll try and hold it for a little while. Yeah. Nice Death Watch style straps. Mm -hmm. Still not exactly sure what will happen with this Marine. I I think he looks badass, honestly. Yeah, you. you should make him uh you should uh make him go with your infiltration specialist. Like yeah, so do I him similar colors. With something like that pretty well. It'd be cool like to be like a proper his his 